What is up everybody? It's your boy DJ Mako with the hair. Malachi Corliss coming at you again with another video. So a question I get all the time is, Malachi, what DAW do you use? Which if you don't know, a DAW is a digital audio workstation. So a digital audio workstation is what you use to create and synthesize and arrange music. A lot of professional tools out there exist like Ableton, FL Studio, Logic are some of the most popular ones right now. What I use is a program called LMMS. Should you use LMMS? <sighs> of course. It's free. Free. LMMS is free, everyone. So that means you should use it. Duh. It's a great program to get your feet wet with music production and learning how to compose and create and use synthesizers. So I'm gonna go over the biggest things that I find helpful when getting started with LMMS today. So this is what it looks like when you open up LMS, LMMS for the first time. And here's the biggest thing I recommend. Get to know the DAW that you were trying to use. And since LMMS is free, which is why you should use it and get your hands dirty with using a DAW, get to know the interface, understand how everything works, understand how to get around the program quickly. Because ultimately, the reason you want to be familiar with a DAW is because you want the DAW to be able to keep up with your creativity. If you are struggling and clicking around for things that you don't know where they are and you forget an idea for a track that you've had, that's a wasted idea and you might never be able to come up with that idea again. So a few things I just want to go over are how LMMS is structured. So first off on the left side here, we have six different icons here. If you hit the top one, that's all the different instruments LMMS has available to you. So you can use each of these different instruments. You can click one, I'll click the triple oscillator, drag it over to this song editor window here. Okay, so this song editor window is the master timeline for a track that you're doing. So every project has one timeline for songs. Okay, so this song editor, if you open it up here, you see that there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's how many measures are in the song. And so if you want to create a track, what you do is you can click in one of the squares, double click, and then draw out whatever notes you want to play. So, all right, so that window that just opened up when we double clicked is called the piano roll. So you never actually have to hit the piano roll icon in my opinion. What you can do is always just find a track or an instrument. You click in that instrument thing, double click it, and we'll open up what it is in the piano roll, okay? And so to tweak every single instrument, you would just go to it, click it, and this is all the properties for that instrument. So you can change different things like the type of wavelength you're using, the pitch of it, etc., etc. Get to know each of these plugins. The last thing that's really important, actually two last things, is this beat and baseline editor. So in your song editor, your master timeline, you have these beat and baselines that you can click and you can make these blue squares, okay? But these blue squares correspond to a drum pattern or a synth pattern that you've already created and just wanna duplicate. So you can hit that show beat and baseline editor. This is kind of what we have to work with over here. What I'm gonna do to get some drums in here is on the left side, if you hit two icons down from the instrument plugins, it's the samples, all right? And you're gonna go to drums and then just kind of grab whatever drums that you are like, you like the most. So I'm just gonna grab some basic ones. I don't typically use LMS's built-in drums very often, but what you can do is draw out a pattern here, hit spacebar. We made a very simple drum beat but now if we go to our master timeline, you'll see that once I hit play here, it's gonna play four measures worth of that pattern we just created. So that's how the master timeline works. There's also automation tracks, which I won't go into super detail, but they basically control different knobs that you program them to control. And the last thing you need to know about is this mixer tab here. So what you can do is 
hit the plus button, it will create a bunch of mixture channels. And so every instrument you have, whether it's in the beat and baseline editor or in the song editor, you can click on that instrument and then on the effects number here, you can route it to a channel. So now this is in FX1 and I can put also my kick drum in FX1. So then what you can do is if you click the FX meter, you can control the volume. If I hit play here on the master track, you can see that the volume's coming through this and I can turn it down or turn it up. So that's the basics of LMMS. Look up tutorials. There's other tutorials out there. Cubition is a great resource. I'll be posting more tutorials, but get to know the software that you're using. The second most important tip, and this is a really easy one, is remember to save, save, save everything. Control S is your friend. So the reason for that is LMS is a free program. It is open source, which means it has bugs. It tends to have bugs and sometimes the program can crash on you. So what you need to do is consistently be saving a project. If you notice at the top left on your title screen, Whatever the name of your project is, if it has a star next to it, that means it has been changed since the last save. So if you hit Control S or hit the save icon, since we haven't saved this project yet, we can just give it a name. Test one, hit save. Okay, now that star goes away because it saved the most recent version of the track. The third tip I have is when you're learning this program and want to make really good sounds, get to know just a few instruments. A lot of times people will try and tweak, and I did this myself when I first started the program, you try and learn every single instrument, but you realize after doing it for a while, some instruments are a lot more versatile than others. So for example, I typically only use the audio file processor, organic, the kicker, the SF2 player, triple oscillator, and add sub effects. That's mostly what I use. Sometimes if I want a very specific sound, I might use some of these other plugins. But for example, I never, almost never use Patman, this NES-like synthesizer, Mallets, or the Gig Player. Almost never use those. Actually, I've never used pretty much any of those in a track that I've put out there. Get to know a few synthesizers really well. Get really good at those before trying out different plugins, different synthesizers, things like that. My next tip is to learn the keyboard shortcuts. Learn the shortcuts that will make it easier for you to fly through the software and let the software keep up with your creativity. So for example, one of the biggest ones I use all the time is in the song editor you can control click and drag whatever pattern it is to an open section and it will repeat that same pattern in multiple spots so now if we play this you'll see that we have a bunch it repeats itself because we dragged it over. You can also, if you want, drag them over to a different instrument. So this organ sound here is, so if we double click that, it just makes your productivity a lot better. What you can also do if you double click and go in the piano roll here, if you hold down control, you can drag over and select items instead of drawing items on the piano roll. So if we normal click, it's just, we're just adding notes. If we right click, we erase the notes. And if we control and drag, we can select them. And the reason this is important is because now if I hit control C, copy, and hit the arrow at the top here, control V, I just duplicated the pattern. So now it's. That is another keyboard shortcut I use all the time. I also will use control right click on some of the things in my track. And what that does is it grays it out and mutes it. So if I have an idea where I'm, I like this pattern, but I don't necessarily want it to play in that part of the track, that's what I'll do. So my next tip is use presets to learn, 
but don't use them in your final project. And here's what I mean by that is when you're first learning, you're not going to know how all these synthesizers work. There's presets that are available. These are all the presets here. So if we click on this left side here, there's one of the, the fourth icon down is called my presets. And so by default, there's less presets than I have here. I've made a lot more because I've been using this for a while. But if we click triple oscillator here, you can scroll down and find something like a razor over here. So if you click and drag it over, that will be, uh, it's, a, it's a good synthesizer uh, preset for triple oscillator that you can learn a lot of things about your track from. So if you click on it, you kind of can look at the settings for it, understand how it was made. It's using AM modulation and PM on the second and third oscillator. And what you can do is go to the effects tab over here, which has all the effects that are on that individual instrument. You can, if we hit the effects chain green light over here, it turns them all off. And you can barely hear anything because the sound is so much different with the effects on it. So I recommend using instrument presets to learn about the instruments. And then once you've kind of learned how they work, then you can start creating your own presets. And that's going to bring me into my next point, which is once you have started creating your own instruments, start saving presets. Don't double the amount of work that you have to do. For every individual track, what I used to do is I used to make a s new sounds every single time or try and replicate them. And then I realized I was making so much extra work for myself because I already had a sound that I liked and I kept having to remake all those sounds every time and it made it a lot of more work than it needed to be. So an example of this, as you can see here, is I've saved a lot of presets for all of my tracks, okay? So for example, my Paradise Remix, by Matthew Parker over here, I've kind of saved everything that I've used in that track. So if we open this, open a new file, okay, we can kind of just drag in some of these synths. Okay, so like this Beetle Beeps. I don't name things very conventional names, but, but you can kind of hear that like plucky, squarish, sound that's going on here and then this like ambient piano it's a very ambient sound and I like using it in a lot of my tracks if I want like an ambient piano I know that I made it in this remix I saved that preset I can go use it in another track that I'm making so save 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 your presets to increase your productivity again going back to let the program keep up with your creative energy The next one is to use effects on almost all of your sounds. When I first started using LMMS, probably for the first year, I didn't use effects all that often and it can make or break. It does make or break your tracks, does make or break your sounds. For almost every single instrument, I will use some sort of effect on it. So for example, this ambient bells one, there is a bunch going on here very calm peaceful we can talk more detail about the synthesizer itself and how i got that sound but most of that ambientness comes from you hear how there's like now with the effects on it's got that like echoey delay and there's not a crazy amount of things that are going on here there's a little bit of reverb i've amplified it because it's a quieter plug-in uh, which means just making it louder uh, vintage delay over here gives it that like uh, 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 sound so typically the three plugins that I use almost consistently if I open up this triple oscillator here that has nothing done with it the three that I use are reverb okay and it's this plate two by two reverb I use that on almost everything which maybe I shouldn't do but that's the sound I like and I know how to control it it's very simple but gives me a good sound so it'll give it that like reverby like it's in a real room as opposed to just being created in a box um, the other one that I use consistently is vintage delay so it's calf vintage delay if you turn up this amount thing here and then change the tempo to whatever the tempo of the track is mm -hmm. 
And the other one that I use all the time is the EQ. So I usually use this two by two EQ. Um, the reason is because this is a stereo EQ. So you can change the different frequencies to make it get rid of that bassy sound. Add more trouble to it. So those are the three I probably use consistently. There's other ones that are in there. There's so many effects in LMMS, but you're not going to use most of them. All right. The last tip that I have is layer your sounds. To get good sounds in LMMS, I found that you have to layer things. So I'll bring up an example. All right, so I just opened up a remix that is coming out soon, very soon. So I'm not yet announcing what it is, but if we go over here, it, my projects are kind of messy. So, but I'm gonna go to the drop of this track and kind of talk to you about what's going on here. So if we play it, So, it's kind of got that like really synthy, punchy sound to it. So if we click on it over here, you can see that I've copied a lot of different synth layers over here. So let's kind of break this down here. I have this one sound that's... So that's one layer. Two layers. A lot quieter. As There's this third layer. And the reason I have these different layers is they're panned in different directions to add more wideness and um, color, I suppose. So this is some of my higher sounds. And then this is a violin sound that I like to add. And then this is kind of the synth that's going on there. All right, so that's just a few of the layers that are going on. There's a few others like the sub bass. There's this. So all separately, they don't kind of sound that great. But, oh, there's also this bass. Really grungy bass. So there's also, oh, there's one other layer. I don't mind the mess. It's still a work in progress. But all those layers together... Once they're sidechain, which I can't go into in this video, but that's basically making those sounds fit underneath the kick pedal as opposed to playing at the same time and drowning out the sound of it. So if we play this here. You can hear all those different sounds. So layer your synths. Get used to figuring out what synths sit well together. And then once you have that kind of figured out, save those presets reuse those i've used those synth layers multiple times in different tracks the last thing i'm going to say practice 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 using this you are not going to be good in a day you're not going to be good in a week but if you keep working at it keep learning don't stop learning about the program and about daws you can get good at it and this is a fully functioning completely workable daw I would say now when I first started it was not to that point and it was a lot harder to use but they have added a lot of things to make it even better and they're continually working on it to make it a better program so get it it's free and if you decide this is something for me get better at it maybe pay for something else along the way also uh, like comment and subscribe please it really helps yeah Malachi Corliss, DJ Maker with the hair. Peace.